Hi guys! Welcome to my channel! So before we get started make sure to hit that like button, also subscribe to my channel. The Secret History of Bioluminescence So make sure to watch the full video. In the late 1990s, marine biologist Stephen Haddock paid a visit to fellow scientist Asamu Shimamura at his laboratory in Woods Hole, Massachusetts. The two researchers shared an obsession with bioluminescence, light produced by chemical reactions in the bodies of living things, most famously the firefly, but also in fungi and a multitude of ocean creatures. At one point during their meeting, Haddock recalls, Shimamura poured what appeared to be large sesame seeds out of a jar and into his hand, dribbled some water onto them, and crushed them into a paste in his fist. Then he shut off the lights. His palm glowed a transfixing blue, as though it held a fairy. The sesame seeds were in fact the dried bodies of tiny crustaceans, known as ostracods. Shiromura explained that during the Second World War, the Japanese army harvested huge numbers of the creatures from the ocean. The cold blue light of Yumihataru, sea fireflies, was bright enough for soldiers to read maps and correspondence, but too dim to give away their position to nearby enemies. It was an easy, simple source of light, says Shimamura, who is 87. You just add water. Very convenient. You don't need any batteries. By the time Haddock visited Shimamura, the desiccated plankton were many decades old, yet they still retained their power to shine. Haddock was so enchanted by this tale that he asked Shimamura if he could take a small portion of the ostracods back to his own laboratory at the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute in California. He keeps them in a container no larger than a spice jar, which he rarely opens. I've only tested it five or six times, he says. But if you're lucky and the mood strikes, he just might take his little genie lamp off the shelf and conjure that ethereal glow. What is it about bioluminescence that we find so mesmerizing? Light, after all, is abundant. Each morning, an immense bowl of light lifts itself above the trees and rooftops higher than birds and mountains, and spills its golden contents. Sunlight washes over the continents and oceans, dripping down forest canopies and pooling in valleys and deserts. It splashes silently across farms and cities. It slips into our bedrooms, seeps beneath our skin and tunnels through our eyes to illuminate the theater of the mind. Yet we can't seem to get enough light or feel close enough to it. Throughout history, Many cultures have told stories of people and beings wreathed with halos or imbued with an irrepressible brilliance, gods, angels, fairies, saints, and jinns. To be infused with light is to be divine or supernatural, precisely because it is an impossibility for us. Failing to summon life from within, we found other ways to generate and control it, to keep it nearby even in the sun's absence. We tamed fire and channeled electricity. We learn to fling bombs of color against the veil of night and line our roofs with gleaming drops of rainbow. We devised powerful beacons that could be summoned at the flip of a switch and erected shining pillars along our streets. Today, some people are even willing to sew LED beneath their skin in order to backlight tattoos or simply for sheer novelty. But it is all pretense. Despite our slick technology, we have never truly matched the ostracod or firefly. We cannot equal their intuitive mastery of illumination. Light is woven into their very biology in a way we have never known. For an organism to make light, especially to have a big display of light, seems to us like a superpower, Haddock says. It's a power we could not resist exploiting. For millennia, people have devised ingenious applications for bioluminescence, many of which are little known today. Roman naturalist and philosopher Pliny the Elder wrote that one could rub the salon of a certain luminous jellyfish, possibly Pelagian Octoluca, onto a walking stick to make it double as a torch. In the late 17th century, the physician Georg Eberhard Rumphius described indigenous peoples of Indonesia using bioluminescent fungi as flashlights in the forest. And before the 19th century, coal miners filled jars with fireflies, as well as dried fish skin crawling with bioluminescent bacteria to serve as lanterns. The safety lamp had not yet been invented and carrying an open flame into a cave wrist igniting explosive gas. It took much longer for people to find uses for ostracods and other tiny gleaming sea creatures 
because, for most of human history, no one knew they existed. Early explorers puzzled over ribbons and specks of light around boats and oars, as well as radiant waves and regions of shining water sometimes known as milky seas. Initial attempts to explain such phenomena were often closer to poetry than science. For many, light was akin to fire, even if it was in water. Hai Ni Shi Chu Chai, a 4th or 5th century BCE Chinese text detailing nautical adventures, states that one may see fiery sparks when the water is stirred. Likewise, in the 17th century, French philosopher René Descartes likened the light seen in agitated seawater to sparks struck off flint. During a cruise to Siam in 1688, Jesuit missionary and mathematician Guy Tackard wrote that the sun had ostensibly impregnated and filled the sea during the day with an infinity of fiery and luminous spirits. In 1753, Benjamin Franklin surmised that some sort of extremely small animalcule in water may yet give a visible light. Around the same time, naturalists such as Godieu de Rivel, equipped with early microscopes, confirmed that Franklin's hunch was correct. The ocean's glints and glows emanated from living things, from tiny marine insects, we now call plankton. By the early 20th century, bioluminescent plankton were far from unknown entities. They were under intense scrutiny by some of the world's most powerful military forces, literally caught in the crossfire of human warfare. What do you think of our video? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button. Also subscribe to our channel before you go.